So this is Kirby's Dream Land for the Nintendo Game Boy. This category is called All Items, and it is a uh, variation on the any percent of Kirby's Dream Land in which you have to get every item in the game. So there's a lot of health pickups and uh, things like invincibility candies hidden throughout. So the nice thing about this category is that you get to see a lot of stuff in this game that you wouldn't see in the any percent category. Um, also, it has a lot of variety of movement. You'll see a lot of these item rooms, like that first one, have a lot of very, very tight movements to try and optimally grab two items, where you're going to take advantage of direct motion and Kirby's sucking ability to try and get everything as quickly as possible. So one of the other main things you'll notice about this game in any category is that there is a lot of lag, so lag reduction plays a big part in this game. So you want to tactically manage um, your jumping ability and anything else you do so as not to cause lag, including the way I ate those two enemies by sucking at the last possible moment to not cause any vacuum animation to appear on screen, because that would cause lag. Here's our first boss. Of course, it's Wispy Woods. Um, the apples do not count as items, unfortunately. That means we can be here for a while because they will spawn in directly. But with this guy, all you want to do is you want to grab the apples as quickly as possible. So he drops them in sets of three. So you want to grab the third one while it's still in the air and fire as soon as possible so we can start the next cycle quickly. And then grab that star as soon as its hitbox spawns, because it hits its hit its hitbox doesn't spawn until uh, it reaches its stable position where I grabbed it from. So this is Lolo Castle, and this is the place that really showcases um, all like the hidden rooms that this game can have, because Lolo Castle it's full of stuff. And you'll see that item grab right there. You'll see a lot of that in this level and in the next level, where you're gonna hit a couple items in a room in a really really tight way. So you would not go down here in an any percent run. You would just keep going straight across to the door to the right, but we have to go into this room um, simply for the sake of picking that up and heading over here to the bottom to get another item in the next room. So here, here we see the one and only invincibility candy in this game, and we are going to take advantage of it to make the next portion of this run a little easier. Unfortunately, the uh, activity of the Invisibility Candy lasts until you get into this mini-boss, but it, you cannot kill the boss with it. You can just barely make it in with candy, but it does not work to damage the boss. So this is Lolo. You're going to see him again with his partner Lala at the end of this level, but it's just one for now. So there's a hidden item in this block. You have to go around it for some reason. And you go in here, you have to grab this, jump across, grab that as you're falling, and head out. And then this uh, ring spawns when you leave the room, so you have to take care of that really quickly. Because you want this um, mint leaf to last as long as possible. Oh, this is spicy gray, excuse me. Um, you want it to last as long as possible. If you play really well, you actually can take the spicy curry into the boss and hit it, but we can't get that here. So what we're actually going to do is try and get as many doubles as possible, we call them, where if these two line up in consecutively like that, you can run down and grab them. So unfortunately, I missed that one. Um, one thing to note is that you can also do what's called a layover cycle, where if I knew that was going to happen that second time, I can hold it until the next round and then hit one of them twice. Because they each have three health, so you also have to keep track of their individual health meters because they die um, according to their own meters. So that boss actually does have a lot of depth because of the uh, nature of the double cycling and the, the strategy of the health bars. So Float Islands is my favorite stage in the game because it has a lot of platforming and no RNG at all whatsoever. Um, so I'm going to be doing everything platformy that you've seen so far. Tight jumps, damage boosting, lag reduction, you name it, it's here. First we're gonna go over to the left here to get one item hidden over here. Once again, you would not go over there in an any percent or um, extra mode run. And then we're gonna go over here too, and there's a bunch of items over here. Go through this door. 
there's more items over farther to the right that we get to after this door. So you eat one of those coconuts because you fall through water faster when you have something in your stomach. But you have to be careful then because you can fall to your death. If you, like, hit the water's edge with, like, almost half of Kirby, you die. It's a very, very tight window. It's kind of the opposite of, say, a Super Mario World. So that ghost was there, even though we couldn't see him. Happens on the Game Boy. So we actually are going to get this curry. Um, most people get that in any percent. I choose not to because of lag reduction. But in all items, you have to anyways. And then we're going to go in here to pick up one more item. So you'll notice that the water actually kills the curry. For whatever reason. So we don't get to use it. So we just have to do that really, really tight enemy grab. And that body. So um, another thing with this game is that if Kirby falls from a high enough height, he will hit enemies and destroy them without taking damage. So you saw that there. It's not a really, really high height, it's a couple tiles above a neutral jump. And you take advantage of that in quite a few spots here. So this boss is Kabula. And basically you just want to hit him a lot. Especially in a race, and when we do him later again in the uh, boss refights, because this is apparently a Mega Man game, um, you want to take as little damage as possible, but his shot pattern is random, so you have to be adapting and adjusting on the fly. So this is Bubbly Clouds. It's pretty infamous among KDL speedrunners, because in no matter what category you're doing, this stage has a lot of tricky platforming. You're gonna jump right through the gap there, hit that guy, and you basically want to jump into the into the explosion because the hitbox goes away before the animation. But it can still be a little nerve-wracking. So you can run right under this cannon, but you have to duck under those guys because sometimes they'll hit you, sometimes they won't. Another thing to notice, that guy's pattern is random, so you have to adapt on the fly. I hit those spikes, which isn't it wasn't intentional, but it actually really doesn't matter that much in all items, because one perk of all items is you can do a lot of extra damage boosts and more risky strats because of all the health pickups that you have to get to complete the category. So that's one thing that makes this category more exciting than just your uh, normal mode or extra mode. We're also going to go over here to this hidden room that I remember being very proud of myself for discovering as a kid. There's a couple items in here. And yes, the, uh, the mint leaves do count as items. Pretty much everything that you can pick up that disappears counts as an item. Um, I don't know if there's an explicit definition, but... All of the runs on the all-items leaderboards have the same items in them, so... so this is Krako Jr. His pattern is the same every time. Nothing terribly exciting here. But after this, um, we are going to do something called the Waterfall Grab. And this is a really cool glitch that doesn't actually save time, but we do it because it happens to fall exactly along the optimal route to move through this room. So we're going to turn around, grab this leaf, and then if you grab it at the right spot, you go behind the background. It saves no time, it does nothing special, it just happens, it has something to do with the properties of water. Um, and we happen to hit the water as we're in the transitional state, transitioning to the uh, mint leaf. And once again, you saw I took a hit from that Gordo over in the uh, block of blocks, the block block, because there's so many health pickups in this category that really doesn't affect me. So this, uh, this block tunnel here is actually more difficult than you think, because you have to stay right on top of these blocks so that you're not lagging the game too much, but you can't get too close or you'll bonk against them. You also have to be aware and you have to fly over those gaps. Um, there's a hidden one up over here. You have to come all the way over, and then it will fall down and you have to suck it up. And then, after we clear this next room, we're going to go into the infamous moon room. And it's infamous because there's a bunch of falling items, and they will fall beyond the bottom of the screen, so you can't wait till you get to the bottom to get them. Um, if that happens, you have to fly halfway back up, which costs about 20 to 30 seconds, unfortunately, but it's entirely RNG. And even if you get the good setup, sometimes it doesn't work. So in this run, I actually managed to get it, and that's really, really good, because that's very hard to do. So this is Krakow. Uh, KDL speedrunners hate Krakow because his pattern is entirely random, unfortunately. But you just you have to react on the fly to what he's doing and pray he's coming. Oh, 
so as you can see, you can nail him right in the face. Um, you can actually do that even if he's not on his last hit. You can hit him and then jump right over him, and I usually do that a lot. Um, if he's gonna swoop after he drops a Waddle D, it looks really cool. It's not insanely hard, but it makes for an exciting boss fight. So now we're in the boss refights here, and you're gonna see how each one is a little mini stage, and then the boss. So there's no, um optimal order to take these guys in. The only real rule is that you should do a door on the left first because, as you may have noticed, uh, when Kirby stopped sliding, he was a little bit more to the left. Other than that, it is entirely up to player preference, so I designed my order based on the bosses that are most likely to deal me damage that I don't want to take, as opposed to a damage boost or an intentional damage, so that I can do the bosses that have damage boosts and be sure that I'm not going to get hit randomly and die, because I'm out of life from the damage boosts. So I take down Whiskey and then Kabula, and Kabula, as I said earlier, is the most likely to deal you intentional damage. So there are also, there are no items in the uh, boss fight, so technically all items, all the items are done um, when you finish the moon room. I guess that makes it fair counts, but you have to get it or the screen won't scroll to Kabula anyways, so. so... As you can see, Kabula fires completely randomly the single shots, the triple shots, he can turn upside down. You just have to be able to react, react on the fly, and in a race situation you have to know when to pull back. Insane. So once again we'll get an opportunity here to see some low level cycle skips. So this is uh, good. When they're both in the middle like this, you have to take two damage to get the skip, but usually it's worth it, which is again why I get the, um, the unintentional damage bosses first, so that I know I can do all these little skips without risking dying later. So that was a really good fight because we got two skips. Um, three skips is in the world record, but it's it's entirely RNG because it depends on where Lola Lola and Lala spawn. So that is called Gordo Skip right there. You use your iframes to get in the door before the Gordo can kill you. Um, there's nothing particularly special about it, but it saves quite a few seconds. You can actually do Gordo Skips in the Float Islands refight and the, um, Green Games refight, but both of those are much harder. And given how little time they save, in the end it's really up to runner preference whether or not you want to take the damage. Because if you take more damage, then you're losing time because you can't do as many damage boost type strats, for example, Lolo and Malala, which is a time loss, so it's really a runner decision where you have to factor in all these time-saving elements and decide for yourself, how can I play this game as fast as possible? We're finishing up Krakow here, and now we are moving into King DDD. Um, so he is going to run, jump, hammer, do all the things that King DDD does, and we are just going to hope he does attacks that give us those two stars so that we can hit him. Time stops in this run on the last hit on DDD. There's nothing too special about this boss fight other than it's kind of a gamble, especially in a marathon, where the closer you get to him, the faster his attacks activate, especially like the hammer. He'll activate, like he'll swing the hammer when he gets close enough to you, so if you start close to him, he activates it sooner, but you have to be able to react quicker to adapt to what attack he's doing. So especially in a marathon setting, if you only have one or two health, you might decide to pull back a little or not and just go for it in a PD attempt. Also, this boss has great music. And here comes the last hit. And that is Kirby's Dreamland All Item. 